Hey, what's going on, everyone? How you guys doing today? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And let me ask you guys a question. Start off with a question. Do you think Sony is a competent company? Do you think Sony Pictures is a competent film studio? Do they make good movies? Do they understand how to make money in the current day and age? I don't quite know if they do. I don't personally think that they do. But then again, I'm just a random guy on the internet. I don't run a multi-billion dollar movie studio. However, when you see headlines like this, that Masters of the Universe reboot might go straight to Netflix, it really does make you question just how Sony is right now in regards to everything. Now, they just announced the PlayStation 5 coming out holiday 2020, which was going to happen, which is going to be huge, and I can't wait to get my hands on one. But when it comes to their film division, yeah, as good as it could be. So what exactly is going on with this particular tale? What exactly is going on with Masters of the Universe potentially going to Netflix? Well, THR here has a scoop that says that the Masters of the Universe reboot potentially ending up on Netflix. Co Sony currently has the film slated for a theatrical release in March of 2021, but an insider tells THR that studio chairman Tom Rothman is exploring the prospect of getting risk-free cash for the pricey project by making it for Netflix instead. Now, Netflix currently has uh, Masters of the Universe-related animated series in the forms of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power in an upcoming Kevin Smith-led He-Man series which would make Masters of the Universe movie fit right in. Whether or not Sony does sell Masters of the Universe to Netflix, the concept is definitely the start of a trend in Hollywood. And this is what THR says. They said, studio selling to streamers is an accelerating trend. Paramount is looking into dedicating a division to that purpose, while source with knowledge of the situation says Sony's TriStar label is devoting resources to streaming deals, and the indie line A24 inked a multi-year agreement in 2018 to produce a slate of films. Now, it's not 2018, it's actually 2019. That news just broke uh, just like two weeks ago, and it was a mild, it was a smaller story. I didn't really cover it, but that happened. Everyone was speculating, oh my God, is Apple going to buy Sony? No, no, no. I thought Amazon still might come in and do something, if I'm being honest here. But no, Apple decided to go with A24, which seems to be like the right call. They have a lot of really well-received films that uh, that are lower budget or mid-budget that do okay. And I think that's what Apple's looking for. They're not looking for massively flashy. They're looking for what is going to be considered awards contenders, what's going to bring in a dedicated audience, and what kind of audience they're trying to attract is probably more indie quality uh, over quantity. Netflix is definitely kind of like throw it against the wall and see what sticks. <laughs> but but at the end of the day, uh, this is really where we find ourselves uh, is that Sony, it makes sense for them to do this. And I want to show you guys this here. This is actually from Box Office Mojo. This is the movies released by Sony uh, from January 1st to October 16th, 2019. How much money each movie has made that's come out that's made money this year. We see Spider-Man Far From Home, $390 million with $1.1 billion total. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood has $139 million here uh, with about, a, I believe, a $339 million total. Spider-Man Spider-Verse did very well. Men in Black International, $80 million, not the best. Um, again, Danger Room, A Dog's Way Home, Angry Birds 2. We see Brightburn down here at number 10. Miss Bala here at number 15. Those are both released this year, kind of came in went Holmes and Watson was a Christmas release last year and ended up just crashing and burning. And we can see down here at the bottom that uh, their total domestic take home just this year alone has been nine hundred and sixty three million dollars. That's not that's not too shabby. My favorite one here is this, though. Here's Venom, which has earned Sony two hundred and three million dollars or sorry, two hundred three thousand uh, dollars in, uh, in in twenty nineteen, even though the movie came out on home video. I want to say like December 11th of last year. So it still was making money. It was still playing in theaters up until uh, the early stages of 2019. So it shows you how long some of these movies can last inside of the uh, inside of the system. So ultimately, Sony looking to potentially sell this to Netflix uh, makes a lot of sense. But I would argue that this potentially could be Netflix really kind of who, who maybe initiated this deal. Sony, and I, and I, this, again, my take on it, because they're a Japanese owned company, uh, the Japanese are very cagey when it comes to business. They're very private when it comes to business. So I think it requires an outside take, uh, to, uh, an outside entity to come in and really kind of make it work. And the reason why I say that is Noah Centino, 
Noah Centino is being who is cast currently as He Man, uh, which is very weird that it's Noah Centino. Okay, whatever. But on Netflix, he's been in a couple movies that have done really, really, really well. And as a result of that, I think Netflix wants it not only for the connection to the other, uh, you know, Masters of the Universe properties with the animated shows, but having kind of a homegrown Netflix star in Centino being a key draw for a lot of fans who love him in the movies that he's in. To me, that seems to make the most amount of sense in bringing him over into uh, Netflix. But it also goes to show you predominantly that these studios are in this position where they're going to start selling off these lower to mid budget films as a way to just kind of recoup the cash case in point paramount in regards to uh to cloverfield paradox they filmed the movie for roughly 50 million dollars they they knew that it wasn't going to do very well even though they tied it into uh, into cloverfield uh so they sold it to netflix for 40 million dollars and they ended up you know i mean losing a little bit of money but not as much as they would have lost by having to invest all that money into marketing and netflix made itself a lot of a, a lot of good headlines by running one ad during the super bowl which cost maybe a million dollars right and 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 then they uh, they released it that night everyone went to go watch it everyone talked about it and it worked well for netflix so it really netflix is in this position where they can really really uh push these companies these studios into into selling them uh, these movies for like pennies on the dollar, really, uh, all because the theater system, the theatrical world is shrinking ever more every single year. You know, I mean, look at a movie like Brightburn. It it was a six million dollar movie that did, uh, you know, about 30 million dollars worldwide, I believe, somewhere in that neighborhood. So enough to to warrant a sequel for the same uh, budget. But uh, it's still I mean, you know, it, it came out right after Memorial Day weekend and it came out in summer, a horror movie in summer. It probably would have done more coming out more like around this time of year when horror is definitely a thing. But these movies are up against superhero movies almost every single month. There's like a superhero release or a big release that sucks all the oxygen out of the room. And a lot of people and, and look, I'll be honest with you, I, you know, a lot of people out there would rather just wait for these movies to hit home video rent them from Redbox or watch them on Netflix, then pay the money to go to the theaters. And this is going to be a real big issue in the next couple of years. So seeing uh, Sony potentially sell Masters of the Universe to Netflix, while interesting in and of itself, is, is very much a look at where this current studio slate is. And even Tony Vincent Cuero has said that Sony is not necessary. It's the, for one, it's not for sale. I still think Amazon might come in. Uh, but it, but they also said that they've been they've been careful to not jump into the streaming side of things. Like they don't want... They don't want to have uh, their own streaming app. They would rather just license content, which seems like the best course of action. Look at the boys over on Amazon. That's a Sony created property licensed to Amazon did very well. Uh, it's selling tons of merch. It's reselling tons of comics and people really, really like it. So it's profitable for Amazon and it's profitable for Sony, which seems to make the most sense. El Camino, the, the Breaking Bad movie that's coming to Netflix here in just a couple days. That is uh, very much uh, a Sony property. Sony owns Breaking Bad. So that's, well, that's a Sony property. They were paid money by Netflix in order to get the license in order to make the movie for Netflix. So Sony is in the good position to take whatever what, whatever it has in regards to franchises and license it out in that particular fashion. And, and that's what I think they're going to do, because even looking at their upcoming slate here, uh, what we see here is they have uh, Zombieland Double Tap, which comes out here next week. And that that looks great. Don't know if it's going to do better than the first movie. Black and Blue is more of a drama. Charlie's Angels is something you can just find on streaming. I don't plan on seeing it. A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood is is there is there a take on an Oscar level you know uh, movie with Tom Hanks as Mister Rogers uh, that's opening up on right at Thanksgiving. Then you've got Jumanji: The Next Level opening up a couple weeks later. Little Women, which is another bid for Best Picture with Greta Gerwig directing, and then they've got like Bad Boys for Life and The Grudge coming just in early uh, January, and then you got Bloodshot in February. Bloodshot's again a movie that. Uh, it should be pretty interesting uh, with Vin Diesel in the lead role of this uh, valiant comic book film adaptation, which uh, I think I'm going to be talking to the director of that. That's what I got a call about today. OK, getting back on point, I think Sony is very much in the in, in the right space to make this deal work because it benefits them the most. And if Masters of the Universe does well on on Netflix, then Netflix will pay more money for a sequel. And that's ultimately at the end of the day what they want. They want to make these movies. They want to make their money. But uh, they'll be able to get the licensing fees and licensing everything else and the merchandise, all that stuff. Uh, and it, it could it, this could just simply be where things go. 
But I leave it to you, your guys' thoughts, your guys' opinions. Let me know down in the comments below. I will talk to you all later. Have yourself a great day and peace out.